Hello, welcome to How to Survive in a Bad Economy with our host, Charlie Grant, speaker, trainer, and author. Hello, and welcome to another edition of How to Survive in a Bad Economy. I'm your host, Charlie Grant. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a twin pack show for you today. Uh, we got some powerful women here. They're going to share with you about education and health and wellness. You know our goals are to share with you strategies, techniques, and tips on how to survive, thrive, but keep that dream alive in these economic times. So sit back, relax, and the show will begin. Don't you go anywhere now. Dr. DeBose and Dr. Williams. Show your love, show your love, show your love. Hey, how, how you, you doing? Uh, Dr. Williams. Hi, it's nice, nice to meet you. Nice to have you. Nice to meet you. Nice to have you. Thank you. Nice to have you. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Education, we realize, is the key to success. And finally, we have you guys here. I know you guys have bi very busy schedules. And it's just wonderful to see you guys. And as I'm looking to my right, as I'm looking to my left, uh, Dr. Williams, it's a pleasure to have you guys here. Uh, what can you tell America about Dr. Williams? Well, Dr. Williams is an avid fisherwoman. She loves to fish. <laughs> but more than that, I'm probably an education addict. I got my bachelor's degree at William & Mary, my master's at VCU, Virginia Commonwealth right. University, and then went back and got uh, my doctorate, I think I said, at William & Mary. I've done some post-graduate uh, work at Harvard uh, for a summer, and I have taken courses from about any place you could name. If the right. state or wherever I was working had a course, I took it because you have to be flexible. Yes. In, in a bad economy or even a good economy. And when I was at taking classes at James Madison, I actually took enough that I became certified in Virginia as wow. a special needs vocational teacher. Wow. Fantastic, fantastic. Dr. DeBose, uh, we're great, grateful to have you two on the show. It's just a, a, a splendor to have such powerful people sitting among us and so educated. Um, tell the world about your background. Well, it's interesting because we talk a lot about with pathways, about people taking a different path and maybe ending up in the same place. Okay. And Dr. Williams and I have taken very different paths to get here. I came uh, through the School of Social Work. So I have a master's degree in social work. Uh, my undergraduate was in social work. And then I ended up working at Pathways. I'm in my 24th year here at Pathways. Became a certified special education teacher along the way and uh, ended up getting my PhD, and I've made my rounds to the University of Maryland. Fantastic, fantastic. Dr. Williams, how is education uh, so key for the population in such an economy as this? Well, education is always important. I think, as the uh, folks around the table have already said, mm -hmm. in any economy, but particularly right now, uh, it does not impact the population necessarily that mm -hmm. we work with. We work with the emotionally disabled. Okay. So, yes, uh, they do have a, a disability, but the economy doesn't necessarily impact it because they would be emotionally disturbed mm -hmm. anyway. It may make them uh, more stressed. The other thing that we've learned over mm -hmm. the past 30 years, and this mm -hmm. is our 30th mm -hmm. anniversary, mm -hmm. is that uh, at Pathways, there is no one program okay. that fits the needs of these uh, students. And so we try to prevent a, uh, present a continuum of services to the students. For example, we have six programs and each one is different. Two of them are more transition vocational oriented mm -hmm. than the others. We also are different in that we have inclusion models. Our really belief system is that we want students to succeed and eventually go back to public school. But in reality, we often find that some of our students, when they get to the level where they graduate, do not wish to go back to the public school. They would rather stay and get their state diploma mm -hmm with mm -hmm. us because they have poor memories of when they were in the uh, mm -hmm. schools that they came from. Okay, okay, wonderful. 
uh, either one of you all can answer this question. Why would alternative programs such as Pathways be uh, a good choice for someone for you? Well, I think what's important to recognize is that, um, as we've mentioned, there's no one program for any student out there. And the um, public schools can certainly provide wonderful programs for some students, mm -hmm. but they can't provide the fill the needs of all the students out there. And so that's where we can complement the services that are in the public school system and partner together with the public school system. And that's where alternative programs such as ours can fill the need. Additional resources, mm -hmm. more intensive programming, smaller classes, um, allowing more attention to the instruction that they might mm -hmm. need. Maybe it's addressing instructional needs. Some of the students, particularly ours, um, having emotional disabilities need the therapeutic services. Oh and they might not be able to get that in other schools and we can provide the uh, individualize it to how much individual and group therapy they may need and then certainly the transition emphasis of really helping them not only to get the diploma because that's important mm -hmm. to complete their high school education but also to get all the other skills that are important for life because just the piece of paper is not the key to success right. it's all right. that goes around with that and having a comprehensive education and our t um, program is able to meet the intensive needs of our students that possibly cannot be met within a public school system. Great. If I could follow up on that, Dr. DeBow, I think the, the, the real question here, uh, and I agree with everything you said, but I think to summarize what you said, it's called pay me now or pay me later. When you send a student from a public school uh, to an alternative program, basically what you're saying is that that student who was classified as special ed probably in elementary or middle school uh, is not being successful. The setting does not fit him. His needs are too intense for a regular program. So it's called pay me now or pay me later. You send a student to the, uh, to the alternative school where Yes, it does cost a little bit more, but if you don't give the child the therapeutic, the vocational, and the transition needs in a special setting with intensive staff and give them the remediation that they need, they could become, in the long run, homeless. They could have mental health problems and be institutionalized, or, God forbid, they could end up in prison. Now you think mm. about that. All three of those are going to cost mm. taxpayers. Wow, wow. Where if we work with the children now and give them the basic emotional stability that they need and teach them to cope, they could become okay. productive citizens. Okay. Okay, great. Well, I'm Dr. Williams. Could you please tell us how Pathways is different than other schools? Well, we are a non public special education program. And our philosophy is that you don't put all of the students in one building, in one program, like a cookie cutter. You don't try to make them fit a program. Our largest program is like 40 students, but we have six programs. You keep hearing us talk about continuum, and that's because the law says students have to go from the least restrictive to the most restrictive environment. Rather than just have a program, on one level. Pathways has developed six programs with a different focus in each one of them. Wow. Wow. And by doing that, if a student, let's say, is having difficulty in one or is having a great amount of set success mm -hmm. in one, we have two inclusion programs in public schools that if they're doing that well, we can get them in the public school in the inclusion program right. that we have and then wean them gradually okay. into the back into the public school system. Hmm, great, so great. that is really different about our program. And I think if I could just um, add on to that a little bit, one of the advantages of having multiple small school programs is we have the strength of our large organization. We have the resources of uh, the supervisors and the administrators at the mm -hmm. 
uh, to support all the schools, but within each school they can also function more independently. That's powerful. And powerful. they then are able to look at their particular population mm -hmm. at a given time and make the changes. And as she said, to not make them fit into the mold, mm -hmm. we have the flexibility then to say this is really what the program needs to do to change to meet the needs of those students Great. who are there at any given time. Great. And, and, and I do need to say this, when we talk about emotionally disabled children, we're talking about a wide range of uh, students with mental health needs. If you look at uh, our students, they go from one end, they could be something like ADHD, all the way to the other end, which is bipolar and schizophrenic. We're talking mm. about some students wow. who could have some very serious needs. It's our job to help them know when to ask for assistance, mm -hmm. when wow. they uh, need strategies to cope. And that's not an easy job. It requires uh, a lot of staff uh, to work with the students. As a non-public, just about all of our money goes to staff because we know that it takes a lot uh, to do the job that we do. Wow. So tell me, Dr. DeVoe, what is your greatest joy working with young people. Mm. It's hard to narrow that mm -hmm. down because there's a lot. Or I wouldn't it. be Talk doing it for 24 <laughs> years, that's for sure. But I think what really gets me is that um, when you hear about the challenges that our students are confronting and the issues that they have, I mean, life is challenging for everybody, but right. for them even more so. Right. And so I often talk about the glimpses of hope. And that's what I get so excited about. A student who's having many difficulties, maybe getting along with their peers, maybe they're having difficulty getting up and out of the house in the morning. So the joy comes from that one day when they get up and out. And maybe the next day they don't. But they did it once. That's the glimpse of hope because once they've done it just once, you know they're capable of it. And so you hope to um, remind them of when they did it and were successful one time, mm -hmm. and you hope to increase their success from this much to this much to this much, and to push the, the failures aside. And I love to see that one time, because that one time that they've showed success gives you the hope that it can happen more and more. Right. And that's when they begin to build right. their confidence. And right. they'll take that with them forever. Right. You can't take away the success they have at any given moment. Dr. Williams, maybe you can share with us uh, one, uh, one or a few uh, uh, short successful stories, or success stories, I should say. We have one story that I'd really like to tell. We have a student who graduated, and if you've never been to a Pathways graduation, that's where we really mm. see joy from mm. the parents, from the students. Everybody speaks and they all tell a story. But uh, one, we had this one student who graduated from Pathways, got a bachelor's degree in accounting, got mm. a master's degree in wow. accounting, Wonderful. and she started her own business. She sold the business and she gave to Pathways, I think it was a quarter of the money that she got for the business, mm. to start a scholarship. And so, to me, what that shows is that we didn't just teach her uh, academics, we didn't just give her therapeutic mm -hmm. uh, skills and things like that, but we taught her what it's all about, and that is giving back to the community. Beautiful, she felt beautiful. the need to try to come and mm -hmm. help other students who go through pathways. Great. To me, that's a beautiful story. Great, great. That is excellent. So what are some of the programs that stand out at Pathways um, that individuals could take advantage of? Well, we have a number of programs, both academically, therapeutic, and within the transition program. So let me, rather than highlight just one seconds. or two, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we have two real credit unions in our schools, real. One's wow. Montgomery Teachers Credit Union and one's One. a transit uh, federal credit union. Mm -hmm. So children can get trained there. We also have all types of um, programs like Gavagate where mm -hmm. students can learn to do animation. We yeah. have therapeutic horseback riding. Uh, we have a number of alternative therapies like music therapy, art therapy, all these different activities that our student can partake of. When we look at the transition program, there are a number of community activities that they do. Welcome to the second half of our show, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy.
America, we have a very special guest today. Uh, she's a mover and a shaker. Uh, she's a motivator. Uh, she's a keynote speaker, author, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, she's a television personality. Also, she's a promotional model, ladies and gentlemen. She's been on plenty of TV and radio shows. Actually, this year, the year 2011, she was voted as the top business woman in America. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the sum and I introduce to others all the way from Baltimore, Maryland, Cherie Cofield. Show your love, show your love, show your love. Well, great to have you, Cherie. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, we are very privileged and joyful to have you to come and empower and impact and explode on health and wellness. Uh, so tell us some things about yourself, Cherie. Um, I am the founder and CEO of Cherie Cofield International, okay. which is a health and wellness company that focuses on the total person, okay. not just a part of you, but the All whole right. person with special emphasis on stress management. Great, great, great. Um, maybe you can share with the uh, uh, share with the listening audience or the viewership. Um, why do you think in economic times like these that health and wellness uh, is a great industry for a bad economy? Well, with the economy the way it is now, more and more people they're stressed out. That's right. And when you're stressed out, you're releasing these bad toxins, these mm -hmm. hormones into your body. Mm which are predisposing you to things like heart attacks and strokes. Wow. But if you're not already living a healthy lifestyle, you're doomed from the beginning oh, because boy. you don't have a way to manage that stress mm -hmm. and you can't lower those predisposing factors. Right. Well, tell us also, what have you been doing, or just share with America, some of the things that you've been doing around the country or around the city or around the state? Because uh, I know you've been doing some fairs and some other things of that nature or some, uh, um, uh, some other events. Uh, yes, every year I host the Let's Get Serious Health and Wellness Expo. Okay. Um, it's coming up again in April of 2012, where we focus on getting the family involved, everyone having uh, healthy food samples, power workouts, just getting the family involved in healthy lifestyles. Mm, great, great, great. Sheree, how can the viewing audience get in contact with you if they're interested in partaking in any of the events that you're having coming up? Um, they can feel free to visit my website, ShereeColefieldInternational.com, and that'll list all the dates, times, and locations of all of our future events. So, Cherie, what motivated you to develop such a love for this life-changing industry? Uh, I've always had a passion for the health and wellness industry. I watched a bunch of my family members all uh, serve the public in the health aspect, and I've been a nurse for the last 20, 21 years. I'm sorry, 21 years. So it's obviously something that I love. <laughs> wow. So, uh, Cherie, tell, tell America, why have every America has adopted that concept? Well, I think they're adopting the concept because the morbidity rate, is mm. increasing. I mean, mm. you see people of younger ages steadily passing away right in front of us. Right. So I think it's opening up the eyes of a lot of people to say, hey, I need to take a stronger interest in my health, my eating, my fitness. Okay. Mm. What allowed you to be so multi-talented, Sheree? I, mm. I, I see that you are a, a, a promotional model an author, a keynote speaker. How did you, or when did you know that you had that gift and some, what type of light came over you to say, hey, I can do it? Well, I noticed that with, especially with the economy, the way that it, mm -hmm. that it is, you have to make a way for yourself. Oh, you yes. can't just sit and wait for opportunities to come to you. You have to be a go-getter. Yes, you right. have to reinvent yourself constantly, mm -hmm. going out there, Speak whatever you want to do into yeah. existence. I like that reinvention, because reinventing yourself every day is so essential. It is. Throughout the year, we go from the different seasons and different times. What are some of the things that people can do uh, to during these economic times to prevent the things that you work so hard in your programs to do? Well, my focus is stress management. So um, the biggest thing that you can do is Focus on your needs, not your wants. A lot of times we go out and we may purchase, make a purchase that really 
is meaningless to us. That's right. So focus on the things that you absolutely need, cannot live without, instead of things that you just absolutely want. Okay. That's great. So Sheree, please tell us, in uh, these economic times, is it possible for people to maintain a healthy and fit lifestyle? And if it is, how can they go about doing that? Oh, definitely, definitely, you can do that. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to have a lot of money to have a healthy and fit lifestyle. Uh, gyms are decreasing their gym memberships on a ra at a rapid rate. You can actually get a membership for 10 to $20 a month wow. now. Mm -hmm. um, if that's still not in your budget, then you can do things right in the home. Pop a, pop a disc in the DVD and work out mm -hmm. to that. Take a walk in the neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. As far as eating, we're, we live in a fast food crazy society. Mm -hmm. So eating at home is definitely more nutritious and less expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, Cherie, tell us something. Being though that you're so talented in a lot of areas, what, what, what message can you give to America or to anyone, or maybe a, a, a young woman, a young lady, that what motivates you or, or what got you started or what, what keeps you going? Well, again, with this economy the way that it is, you never know when you may not have a job. Right. Right? You could go in and they say, hey, we, have no, we no longer need your services. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, right. you're yes. scratching your head saying, hey, how am I going to feed my kids? How right. am I going to feed my family? Right. So that's one of my motivating forces. You know, I have two lovely sons that right. they, they love to eat. So. <laughs> <laughs> so if I don't work, they don't eat. So right. that, that's my biggest motivating force. Mm -hmm. And then health and wellness is so important. You know, without your health, what do you have? If sure. I lose my job, but I still have my health, mm -hmm. I can go and get another job. I can start another business. That's true. So that, that was a big motivating factors I think great great thanks a lot right. well Sheree can you give us maybe uh, three uh, tips on eating or, or three great foods to eat or some tips uh, well you want to stay away from the carbs okay. too many carbs okay. you know some carbs are good for you right. um, definitely you eat your veggies as mom always okay. taught us eat your veggies veggies <laughs> yes. are very good for mm -hmm. you um, stay away from fatty foods okay you know okay. fried foods if okay. you can yes. Bake your food, you know. Mm -hmm. It takes away some of the calories. It's less saturated fats in it. Mm -hmm. It's going to help to keep you heart healthy. Great, great. If someone were out there and they wanted to start multitasking like you, say that they're, maybe they're a registered nurse mm -hmm. uh, as yourself, or maybe they're into uh, health and wellness, what are some other things that they could do? They're only doing that one thing now. But what are some other things they can branch into to prepare them for times that may come that they're not expecting? Well, the first thing is to have a vision. Oh, yes. Be creative. Um, once you have that vision, speak it into existence mm -hmm. and then start working and, and make that, what you've spoken into existence, make it come to reality. That's right. um, mm -hmm. You could start off small by coaching. A lot of people don't even know where to start to become healthy mm -hmm. or fit. So you could start off just coaching people. Say, hey, yes. I do a one hour call once a week and I advise you on what to eat or how to work out to get to the goal where you um, are trying to get to. So it's take baby steps, but as long as you're moving forward to reach a goal, that's all that matters. Great. Okay. Great. Well, Sheree, I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of uh, young women who are tuning in today, mm -hmm. and uh, it takes a lot of audacity to go out there in your youth and pursue your dreams. So can you please give the young women who are actually tuning in some advice on how to live their dreams? Uh, again, Dream big, first of all. Oh, yes. Oh, dream yes. big. Once you dream big, write those things down on a piece of paper. These mm -hmm. are things I want to accomplish in my yes. life. Yes. I want to leave behind a legacy. Oh, yes. Um, I want to leave something. People are going to be talking about me when I'm gone. Oh, yes. So write those things down and then take one thing at a time. List how you can reach those goals that you're trying to uh, reach. And then seek people that are already doing what you want to do. And they can give you helpful advice about how to get to where you want to be. Yes, yes. All right. But Shri, I know you had a lot of things going on. What events that you have coming up? I mean, that you know, maybe someone can see you again at an event. What events that you know? My biggest event from? is the 2012 Let's Get Serious Health and Wellness Expo. Okay. Um, it's going to be a lot of health, wellness, fitness uh, speakers, mm -hmm. doctors giving us some health advice. And then the other thing I have going on is a book a collaboration. Oh, great. Um, it's going to be released. The launch date is March the 3rd, 2012. Congratulations. Thank you. I have yes, a chapter. Yes. No is not a dirty word. <laughs> <laughs> so where is that event actually going to be at? Um, actually, the location is going to be announced, so you can visit my website for further information. Oh, okay. But okay, it will great. be April the 21st. Okay, great, great. great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I like that about no, because we share here, take <laughs> no as your vitamin. Yes, right. Yes, <laughs> yes, right. yes. Exactly. So let the world know, how can we get in touch with you so people can find out about the event? 
Um, you can actually reach me at my website again, okay. Sheree Coldfield International .com. Mm -hmm. You can also Google me. Okay. You can look Fantastic. me up on YouTube, Sheree Coldfield. And you you can sure to find me. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Well, that's that's pretty explosive. You're doing some wonderful things, and uh, it it it's, it sounds like you're being a, a role model too, because I'm sure plenty of young ladies and other females see you doing things, writing books, uh, doing all these professional things on radio and TV shows, and and just getting out there and and uh, allowing yourself to obtain multiple streams of income, especially in an economy such as this. I think it's wonderful. Thank I, I think you. it's Thank wonderful. You so yes, yes. Well, America, you've been listening to How to Survive in a Bad Economy. I'm sorry, but that's all the time we have for today's show. Uh, we want to thank you guys for allowing us to come into your homes, to 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 uh, for allowing us really to come into your jobs. Because I'm sure some of you guys are still working. I know the economy's bad. But I hope that some of you guys are still working. Some of you guys are listening to radio and other uh, media devices. Uh, we just want to thank you guys for your viewership as well as those who are listening. And ladies and gentlemen, you must realize that all we have is now. And then you must realize that you are prolific. You are gifted. You are talented. You too are authentic. So utilize your gifts and your talents and understand your purpose, your power, and your passion. In America, one day, you will cash in. And remember, all we want to know, are you ready to grow? Until the next show, America, keep the faith.